Good evening, all. I'm Rapstein with your financial market wrap up, and this is for Tuesday, the 23rd of May, 2023. Well, before we get into all the action going on behind me, let's take a look at the impasse that we have going on, the sticking points between the Democrats, Republicans. Yesterday, there was a two hour meeting between the negotiators. The press says there was only a two hour today and everybody's gone home. They've reached the impasse. I told you yesterday when I saw Speaker McCarthy hold a press conference on the steps of the White House that they were not getting anything done. He said no to everything, everything. I said, what's he got left to negotiate with if everything is a no? Well, today it's breaking down. There's a disagreement on overall spending. The uh, Democrats either want increased or a slowdown over a two-year period, but not a big one, okay? The Republicans want an immediate slowdown, and they don't want a two-year plan. They want a plan that goes probably five to 10 years. So you got that. Defense versus social spending, okay? The Republicans want to put out more defense spending. The Democrats want more social spending. They don't agree on that. Work requirements, a big issue for the Republicans has been work requirements, and they said they won't budge on it. And that requires that able-bodied men and women do a minimum amount of work if they're gonna get social benefits from the government. The word is able-bodied, all right? We're not looking for somebody to get out of their hospital bed uh, and do something, somebody that really can't do it to not get social benefits. But we all know, just drive around, there are plenty of able-bodied people out there that aren't working, and enough. And that's basically what's being said. And now we get to the real important event, Memorial Day. And Congress on Thursday, they adjourn and they head out of town to be with their family. So now let's do the countdown. And this leads us to the next big problem before I put back the quotes for you. Do you believe Janet Yellen? That becomes the question. To me, she has not got the prestige that prior Treasury secretaries had. Not saying why, I don't know why. But I don't think it carries it. I think when she says the June 1st X date, that that's when we're gonna run out of money, I don't think she gets believed by the Republican Party. Problem. Then you get the big banks to disagree with her. They came out and they said, nah, we think it's closer somewhere between the 8th of June and the 13th, but there is a drop dead time where it's going to happen. So what that does is suddenly in the game of bluff poker, the Republicans sit back and go, well, that June 1st date isn't real. We can afford to do nothing. We just bought ourselves some time. So you know that we heard Speaker McCarthy say, and all this is negotiable, obviously, but he doesn't want to waive the three-day rule. So when there is something that the House and the presidents uh, can get together on and create a bill from, he wants three days. That could be waived, but right now he's asking for that. We know that in the background that there's the 14th Amendment. I write about it tonight, whereas there's another way to invoke America paying its bills. Now, it's never been tested in the courts. It might be. It might get a fast track in the Supreme Court, but all that takes time. This doesn't happen in the morning and then in the afternoon, the Supreme Court says, yes, let's do that. Could it? I guess it could, but it typically doesn't. So we are caught in this bluff poker game. Now, I realize when we come back to the markets that so many traders just want to buy the stock indices regardless of everything. We saw it with the rate hikes to this moment, exact point in time on every one, they have said the Fed will never continue and hold the pattern. They will not allow the economy to tip. They won't push it into a recession. And what they'll do is they'll instantly go almost instantly, from raising rates to having to break it. Well, they might get and be proven right if we see the debt ceiling, we pass it and we can't pay our bills. That could tip the economy. It's one possibility. Does it have to? Nothing has to, but it could. So, yes, you were down hard, and now we're getting a bounce tonight, but even down hard, as you'll see, what are you down for the week? 1%? That's not a big break. 
The markets that got hurt worse have been the gold market to silver. This market was just in the 1950s. Yeah, it's bounced $20 off that lows thereabouts. But with the headwind of a strong dollar, with the headwind of higher rates, and they are higher, you know that, there's a problem. There's another problem lurking. We haven't heard anything from Moody's and Standard & Poor yet. They've been wonderful in not doing anything on lowering America's ratings. How long can they hold out? Are they the wild card that starts now saying, if America can't do something, we're gonna be forced to raise or lower or do whatever they gotta do with the credit rating? That's what's probably next. And that will cost America more money as well. So you put this together, you got problems. Now, when we look at the S&P 500, for the week, I just said you're down a percentage point. A close-to-close -close basis, right at this minute as I'm recording, you're down 0.99%. When we look, we're up tonight a fraction. You can see you're getting a little bounce, but the pattern has changed. You got lower highs, lower lows in the market. So you have broken the bullish pattern where you've had from back here, higher lows and higher highs ended. So that wave of bullishness as a chartist, take the name off the chart. I don't give a darn that's a stock index. Until you get through this, you're back in a downtrend. The objective is to get under or back to the 18-day average of close. I call that the line in the sand. Why? Traders, especially moving average traders, one way or the other often say, if a market's over a certain number, it's got a bullish bias a bearish bias if it's under it. I use the 18-day average of closes. So I have a bearish market in the swing line, lower highs, lower lows, but a bullish bias until you close over that. Where do you think this market stopped the rally? Do you know the Bollinger Band theory? It's an algorithm that says 95% of the time the market will trade within their bands. Here's the bands. That's your resistance point. There's the band, you get over it, thrown back in. Here's the band, got thrown back over. I can go on and on, learn how to work with these tools. I teach it in our website under the word education, okay? Go look at the courses, they're right there at iraepstein.com. Next, I look at slow stochastics. You never did in bed, you got overbought, hit those bands, and I know everybody was buying. I'm not in that camp but I have not been in this bull camp for a long time, and it's been the wrong camp, okay? The bulls have been right. I don't agree with what's behind it, but that doesn't mean as a chartist that they haven't been right. This market has had waves to the upside, not to the downside. On each deep break in the market, those that have bought have been rewarded. So when you teach a dog, here's the candy, sit down, Fido, give me your paw, they're gonna give you the paw, they're gonna sit down. Well, they've seen this each time, that's what they're doing. You don't have to agree with me, but that's what's going on. When we come to the NASDAQ, okay. So today, what did this market do? When we step back, you had a good break, you were down one and a quarter percent. Okay, you're not down very much. This isn't the market that's crashing, and you're already making back a quarter, not even that, an eighth of a percent tonight. The pattern is not the same as we saw in the uh, S&P. You have a higher high, lower and low, but what is happening here is you're flirting. Got, got the wink? I'm not sure which one I should do. Uh, you're flirting with get a settlement under 79 and then the odds favor you're gonna make a run back here. Now, the reason this is such a hard market to break is everybody wants to own the AI. You know that, artificial intelligence that are buying. The stock market rally is a rally overall of a handful, I swear to you, of big name stocks all involved in tech that has carried the marketplace sharply higher. When you strip it out, if you took those out, you'd be shocked where the market is. Higher highs, lower lows, oversold. I don't see a trend. And today, what did the market lose in this market? Okay, so you dropped here, three quarters of a percent almost, not very impressive, but you're down to, again, where the market has found support each time. The 200-day average down to the Bollinger Band, and I don't think you're gonna attract new selling at that. You can get panic people just dumping stocks, but I don't think you're gonna get new selling coming in there. When we get to the micro Russell, this has been the strong market. It changed gears on you very subtly, but 
it became the bullish market at the expense of the others. Then we get to the T-bonds. This is called a Gorilla Glue trade. You start hitting the Bollinger Band and you don't leave it. You just keep sticking to it. One day under, one day over, but just staying there. In the process, you take the market down and you make it embed. Embed is when you get three sessions in a row where the numbers are under 20. And as long as they stay like that until the red line flips back over 21, rallies like you're getting get sold by the pros. Something else happening. Look at the 18-day average get under the 100. That's another bearish event. It's called a bearish crossover on the chart. Five-year note. Sorry, I left that cursor up there. Lower highs, lower lows. Here, too, the Gorilla Glue trade. It is trying, present tense, to embed. It needs to get today to do it. So if you get this market to close like this, you got your bearish embedded reading. <coughs> In the dollar index, the world wants to own the dollar because they don't know what happens if the U.S. defaults. We've never seen the U.S. default. So if the U.S. defaults, I want to own the strongest currency in the world, the biggest economy versus my own. It keeps getting a bid. That's exactly what it is. It's a safe haven play. So you're getting it. It's not the yen, if you'll notice. The yen is going for lows, not highs. It's all about the dollar on this. In the euro currency, coming down because of what's going on. Plus, in Europe, we're looking at consumer confidence getting shook. There's a lot of things negative going on in that economy. It has stayed under the 100-day uh, average. The next spot, the lower band, and you got the 200 way below you. You don't want to fight that at this point. If the U.S. solves its problems, you're going to get a washout in everything, and you'll, you'll go through a week where you have to reestablish new trends. But until that happens, you are caught in this play right now, and every currency can't withstand the pressure. Then we get to Bitcoin. It has not gone with the NASDAQ. Not at all. It's staying under the 18-day average. It has a bearish bias, but it's oversold, not attracting new selling, in my opinion. Brent versus WTI crude. You can see you're getting back under that 18-day uh, average, so the narrowness is coming back. The Saudis threatened everybody this morning. I appreciate Dow Jones Newswires picking me up. I'm quoted in them. I said, watch out, folks. The, the, the pros are big time loading up on shorts on the futures markets, and back months especially. The Saudis are master traders. They're seeing this. They came out and they warned everybody today in plain English, you're going to have a problem if you think you're going to fight with us on that. Okay, uh, I'd like to turn that off, so give me a minute here as I finish this up, and I will do that. So just please, there we go. It's my wife. I hope that she doesn't get mad at me. Okay. Uh, the very next step that we have here, we come to rebob gasoline. Well, this is the big driving season. In Illinois, I can tell you, I watched the news before we did this, we're a dollar a gallon cheaper than we were this time a year ago. You're back up to the Bollinger Bands. You've been fighting that resistance. Do you think you go down in front of Memorial Day? I don't think you do. So this is normal. You got the rally that I did in my report a while back. You're not up here again. This was when I did that report and then you caught the rally. So all you're trying to do is go back to where it was. In all fairness, I didn't expect this break to, to ensue from after we got there. I thought you'd go there and maybe go even higher. Nowhere near the numbers that I thought we'd get. And in that gas, I think a bottom has formed in that gas, and I think the market's got to do more work at the 18-day average in order to get it. Now, again, learn Bollinger Bands. Learn the different things that we have. I think they'll help you. Go to our website, irapstein.com. You'll see the free offers. Go in the education section. Read about the courses. I'm Ira. I will talk to you all tomorrow.